Go to patreon.com slash tilted tripod media. Support this channel by becoming a member and unlock the future of video. Click that subscribe button and smash that bell icon. Yeah! This episode of Urbex is brought to you by Draco Noir, now available at Lazarus. Within the black, there is a power. Draco Noir, the men's fragrance by Guy La Roche Paris. Feel the power. This beach towel and thermal dispenser, just $18.50 with any $16 purchase. Available at Lazarus. What's like Christmas in November? Lazarus gift certificates, free with your electronics purchase through Saturday at Lazarus. What a store. Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Urbex and another Eastland Mall. And no, this probably isn't the Eastland Mall that you're thinking of because so many cities have one and it gets really confusing really fast. These are some old photos that you're looking at of Eastland when it was in its prime. So welcome to the Eastland Mall in Columbus, Ohio. So this is a very special mall, not really to me, because I grew up in the Detroit area with a different Eastland mall, but to Nate, who you've seen on many of my videos, and that's because he grew up in the Reynoldsburg area about 10 minutes from here, and he has a lot of fond memories going to this place when he was younger, so I wanted to get back here and film it before the mall closed, and that's exactly what I did. So join me as we explore every inch of Eastland and all of its history. So Eastland Mall was built in 1968 by Richard E. Jacobs Group, which also developed Columbus's Northland and Westland malls, and it was the first enclosed shopping mall in Columbus. Eastland's original anchors were J.C. Penney, Sears, and Lazarus. Although Eastland itself is only a single-story mall, all three of the anchors were constructed with two stories of retail space. The Sears closed off its upper level at some point during the 1980s. The mall remained under Jacobs' ownership until Glimpshire Realty Trust bought it in December of 2003, and the property became Glimpshire's second mall in Columbus following Polaris Fashion Place. Following the ownership change, a fourth anchor Kaufman's was added. This would be a first in a lifestyle prototype featuring a smaller floor plan with wider aisles. That same year, the Lazarus store became Lazarus Macy's, and Macy's moved from the former Lazarus to the former Kaufman's in 2006 when the Macy's chain purchased Kaufman's. Three years later, the owner would propose to demolish the former Lazarus Macy's building for a new J.C. Penney, while dividing Penney's existing store among new tenants. However, as of 2013, the former Lazarus Macy's building remains both standing and vacant. J.C. Penney announced the closure of its store in early 2015. Since Northland closed in 2002 across town, Eastland has now become the oldest operating shopping mall in central Ohio. In 2012, Glimpshire would default on their mortgage loan and have to turn the property over via a deed in lieu of foreclosure to the lender. And in 2015, the mall would be sold for a reported $9.25 million. So this brings us to January 4th of 2017 when Macy's would announce that its Eastland location would close forever. In March 2017, Macy's closed its doors permanently, leaving Sears as the only remaining anchor at Eastland. On June 6th, 2017, the mall's fate was finally sealed as Sears would announce that its Eastland mall store would be closing by early September. This left the mall without any anchor stores. And it's really sad because this is such a great mall and in such great condition. I'm sad to see that it might not last much longer, so let's go inside and take a look at the beautiful architecture and reminisce in the past. So this is just inside one of the main entrances. This is the one that leads directly into the food court, and I absolutely love all the skylights that let in natural light and the beautiful tile work that they have in this food court that you're gonna get to see in a minute. So for a major city, this mall isn't very big, but it is laid out really well, and I do love the way it's decorated, although very dated, since you can tell it hasn't been remodeled in quite some time. But that's okay, because I tend to like that kind of thing. Takes you back to another time period that you didn't get to experience, or maybe you did and you're just getting to remember it. 
and there's a look at that amazing food court. It's really clean, really well put together, and you can tell they have great pride in this mall. So for those of you that aren't from Columbus, Columbus is laid out kind of in like a big circle. You have downtown in the center, then you have the Outer Loop Expressway 270, which goes around through the suburbs, and you had Westland, Northland, Southland, and Eastland all on that Outer Loop area. Sadly, they're all gone except for Eastland. Westland is still standing at the moment, but it is currently closed. The only malls in Columbus that are thriving are all on the north side, a good half an hour to 45 minute drive from where Eastland is. And that's kind of sad because this area isn't exactly um, prosperous. Therefore, driving a long distance may be difficult for a lot of people that live around here, and this may be their only shopping option. The architecture in the ceiling and the way that they have this place lit is really cool. I love it. It's just completely different from a lot of other malls. Was that a Journeys maybe, or some kind of a restaurant? I'm not really sure, but you should let me know down in the comments. So I think this is the Sears that you're looking at right here. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, but I was really shocked by these really high ceilings. They remind me of like a concert hall or something like that. Also, this skylight is kind of odd for a mall because you usually would see these in downtown office structures or, you know, large retail buildings downtown. It's just kind of odd for a mall. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any vacancy rate statistics, but there's a fair amount of stores still left in here. And for being a weekday, I know it doesn't look busy, but there were a fair amount of people walking around and shopping. This arcade was really unique, and it's almost like walking into an arcade smushed with some kind of a Japanese anime store. It was kind of odd but this is down by the Lazarus, then Macy's wing. And I was told by Nate that this used to have fountains on either side of the storefront. I would have loved to see that. I tried to find pictures of it online, but I couldn't find any. And he said the fountains were really amazing. Really sad that they would have removed those. There again, you can see that awesome lighting all the way down the hallway. And I absolutely love this tile work. It just takes you back to a different era where people took pride in the way things looked. Ah yes, the fun zone. An off-brand of the amazing space. Even worse. <laughs> This brings us back to the food court for a look at the remaining restaurants still available for your dining pleasure. I have eaten at this soul food restaurant and I can say that the food is really good. Not sure what this place was, but it looks like some kind of Italian place, maybe like Sbarro's or that Villa Pizza place. I don't really know, but let me know down in the comments if you know what it is. Here's a look at that amazing tile work that I was talking about earlier, and another one of those odd skylights. If you would like to visit Eastland Mall one last time, or just have never been, I highly recommend doing it soon, as I don't know how much longer this mall is going to be open. Well, I want to thank you for another amazing episode of Urbex. Please head on over to patreon.com slash tiltedtripodmedia to become a member and support the future of video by joining. As always, click that big subscribe button and smash that bell icon so that you'll get notified about future upcoming videos here on this channel. And I want to give a big thanks to everyone who supports this channel. Thanks, and I will see you again in the next video.